All right, here's example number 39. Reading through the prompt, local high school makes a change to improve satisfaction with student parking. So we take a look and start marking the text. Go ahead and pause the video now. Highlight things that are important to you. So here's what I saw. 30% of the school's residents approved of the parking. So that's going to be my P naught for my null hypothesis. Okay. The next thing I saw, the principal surveys 200 out of a population at the school of 2,500. So I've got a simple random sample that cares, takes care of my random condition. And I have 2,500 students. And I can tell right away that that's my sample size, 200, is less than 10% of my population of 2,500. So that's good. And in all, 83 students say that they approve the new parking arrangement. That is my P hat. <coughs> 83 out of the 200. Okay. <coughs> the next thing I see, the principal cites this as evidence that the change was effective. And so you have to use a little bit of context here to understand what the effective change would be. Would that increase or decrease the proportion of students that are satisfied? That's going to increase, which means my proportion should be greater than 0.37. Okay? My confidence or my significance level is 0 0.05, given to me in the problem as well. Alpha equals 0 0.05. So I need to make sure that I define my P naught, the parameter is 0.37, which is the proportion of students that are satisfied with the parking situation. Okay, so take a moment to write all that up. Okay, so I define P as the proportion of students satisfied with the new parking arrangements, and that's to specify that it's different than that 37% that was originally stated. Writing down the other things that we have, my sample size was 200, my population was 2,500, so I'm going to <coughs> Write down a couple of things so I can check my conditions. 200 samples, uh, 200 random sample. My 10% condition was that 200 is indeed less than 10% of the entire school's population. So that's satisfied. Now we take a look at the LCC, the normal condition. N times P. 200 times 83 over 200 is 83, so we know that's greater than 10. And 200 is times 117, or n 1 minus p, is greater than also 10. So my normal condition is satisfied. Okay, so I've got all three of my conditions satisfied. 10%, my random, and my LCC. We can go ahead and carry out our test, finding our test statistic. So, we find that by using our Z formula. Pause the video now if you need to take a second just to digest everything that we did and get caught up. All right, so the observation is the first part. That's the 83 out of 200. So I need to punch that into my calculator. That's going to be my P hat, 83 divided by 200 gives me 0 0.415, so that's my p hat. I subtract from that p naught, what was supposed to be true in my claim, 37% are satisfied. Divide that by our standard deviation. Remember that we use our p naught in our numerator here, so 0 0.37 times 1 minus 0 0.37, 0 0.63, and we divide that by my sample size. Be careful that you are using the sample size and not the population size here. That's a very common mistake. So go ahead, punch that into your calculator. Okay, punch that into my calculator. 0.415 minus 0.37 divided by the standard deviation gives me 1.318. We'll round that to 1.32. So that's my z-score. And when I look at my z-table, that gives me actually a really large p-value. That gives me 0 0.9066. 0 0.9066. But you have to stop and think about what that actually is telling you. When you look at your z-table, what area of the curve is that value? Is that the area that's shaded to the left or to the right? 
that's the area that's shaded to the left. In this case, we're looking for values that are greater than 37%. So I don't want to look at the left side, I want to look at the right side. Which means I need to subtract from 1. So what's 1 minus 0 0.9066? We get our p-value, 1 minus 0 0.9066 is going to give us point zero nine three four. Okay, so now that we have our p-value, we can go ahead and compare that p-value to alpha. What's the relationship between these two? Well, our p-value is actually greater than alpha. So what does that tell us? If p-value is greater than alpha, we are going to fail to reject our null hypothesis. So take a moment, pause the video, get caught up, write out your, re your fail to rejection statement, and then compare it with mine. Okay, so my interpretation of this, since my p-value is not less than alpha, it's greater than alpha, I fail to reject the null hypothesis. When I fail to reject, that means I do not have any convincing evidence. So I do not have convincing evidence that the true proportion of students satisfied with the new parking arrangement is greater than 0.37. So what does that mean? Was the president, the, the principal, was he correct in this instance? No. The, the, there is not enough convincing evidence to state that. It looks like they still need to do a little bit more work to improve student perception on parking. Okay? So go ahead, digest this, see what you need to do. Go back and take a look at anything, and let's take a look at the next example.